I want to start with CPAC today, the Conservative Political Action Conference holding their first 2023 event uh, starting Wednesday, March 1st. Now, I was particularly interested in this CPAC because it was going to allow us to see what is going to be the approach of this group to the 2024 primary at this early stage where Donald Trump is still in command, we have to admit, but there is a fracturing and there are different elements of the right, some of which like the idea of more Trump and some of which are decidedly anti Trump. And then organizations like Fox News were sort of saying, well, we'd rather someone else, but we're not going to completely abandon Trump. We're going to wait and see what would be the mood at CPAC because of all of these different speakers giving us a window into the talking points that would be applied to the 2024 primary or hypothetically might the CPAC speakers just ignore the 2024 primary as if it's not going on, sort of ignoring it like an elephant in the room that nobody wants to talk about. Well, we are still going to be able to see, but it is going to be with a much diminished audience and fewer Republican insiders. And the background of all of this is that a guy named Matt Schlapp, who is not exactly a beacon of gay rights, has been credibly accused of um, uh, uh, what's the right word? at minimum sexual harassment, and I believe it is accurate to say sexual assault of a male staffer some months ago. And it is believed that this is sort of the black cloud over the head of CPAC. So let's look at a couple of different articles explaining what's going on. First and foremost, CPAC is being ignored by Fox News, Uh, one of the biggest outlets for CPAC getting attention is that Fox News covers the event interviews people there, promotes the event, et cetera. Daily Beast writes CPAC has a major Fox News problem after right wing power broker Matt Schlapp was accused of sexual assault. He and his annual confab have all but disappeared from Fox News, a shocking break from years past. And it is a break for shocking, you know, is sort of subjective, but it is certainly a break Uh, amid the alleged groping scandal. Justin Barragona for the Daily Beast writes over the past few years, the conservative cable giant has not only aired the entire multi day conference on its digital streaming platform, Fox Nation, but the network has also been a featuring sponsor in 2021. For example, Fox Nation paid a quarter of a million dollars to help underwrite the overtly partisan gathering. The year before that, they paid twenty eight thousand dollars to be a sponsor as of publication. Schlapp and his annual convention have all but disappeared from the Fox News universe. None of Fox Media's outlets are listed among their sponsors, which includes their conservative arch rival Newsmax, as well as far right competitors like Real America's Voice. Additionally, Fox staffers told The Daily Beast they have yet to receive any guidance on how they will cover CPAC. An apparent Fox News blackout on CPAC would present a stunning break from past years, which reliably demonstrated a symbiosis between the cable giant and the right wing confab. Hannity and Laura Ingram would often deliver speeches or host panels, which then the network carried. And then outside the ballroom, you would see Fox people walking around. It's not clear whether any of that will be going on. Now, the context does seem to be the alleged groping scandal that I, I, there was some speculation that this break between Fox News and CPAC has more to do with Trump than it has to do with the groping scandal. Maybe, but I've not seen any actual evidence of that. And the Daily Beast article does men- mention the Daily Beast first reported that Schlapp allegedly groped the crotch of a male staffer on failed Republican Senate candidate Herschel Walker's campaign. The individual, <laughs> this is insane that these is this is the language that's being used claimed that Matt Schlapp grabbed his quote junk and these terms are all in quotes and pummeled it at length and it was scarring and humiliating. Schlapp is just denying he's like, no, it didn't happen, even though there are text messages that do seem to show Schlapp uncomfortable and and maybe I don't want to say apologetic, but regretful in some way. Um, Schlapp is, as far as we know, uh, heterosexual and married to a woman. So that is part of the problem that CPAC is having. Now, there is another story with this. Mike Pence declines invitation to CPAC as events leader comes under fire. This is from ABC News. 
The decision by Pence, who is debating a 2024 presidential run, writes ABC News, comes as other notable figures are absent. Ron DeSantis, who spoke at CPAC last year, has two events in Texas as CPAC will be underway in Maryland. A spokesperson for CPAC told ABC News neither Pence nor DeSantis are currently slated to attend. Uh, DeSantis, spokesperson, didn't respond and uh, Pence didn't attend in 2022 and declined to attend in 2021. The context here is also believed to be the sexual assault scandal. Trump is scheduled to headline the event. So I think that this is actually you know, normally CPAC is kind of a waste and I don't typically cover much of it, if any. Sometimes we've not covered any of it live. My goal this year was actually to cover the major speeches live on YouTube, Twitch and Facebook again because of the interest that I have in seeing how CPAC frames the 2024 uh, Republican primary. Now, one of the things that may happen by default is there are with, with DeSantis and Pence as possible 2024 Republican candidates snubbing the event and Trump going. CPAC may just default to will praise the hand that feeds us. Trump is coming here to speak, so we will just get behind Trump. But we don't yet have the full agenda. I hope it will be released soon and uh, we will see what the coverage is from Fox News. We will see what the attitude is towards the primary. I'm actually as interested as I've ever been in uh, covering a CPAC, which is not typically the case. One of our sponsors today is Fume. Fume is on a mission to accelerate humanity's breakup from the bad habits that consume far too many of us, including ones that harm our health. Fume is a natural diffusive device that uses plants and behavioral science to trade out your negative habit for a positive one. Fume is not a vape. It's a non electronic device designed to transform your negative habits instead of pods filled with potentially harmful chemicals like a vape. Fume uses cores infused with plants like peppermint and cinnamon for delicious natural flavors. Fume's new version two model is snappy and tactile with an adjustable airflow dial and a magnetic end cap that's fun to fidget with. It's Fume's goal to make switching easy or even enjoyable. They have thousands of five star reviews from people just like you who have successfully switched when other solutions didn't work. Head to tryfume.com and use the code Pacman to get 10% off today when you get the Journey Pack, which comes with three unique flavors and the new version to Fume. The link is down below. 